Welcome to the Keysmash Studios tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you some different types of debugging that Unreal provides in C++. This video is geared more towards beginners. However, even if you've been doing Unreal for a while, you might end up coming across something you didn't know before. As you're watching, if you find this video helpful, please remember to like and subscribe. So to go ahead and begin, I want to show you a debugging trick that can be used through Visual Studios. So right now I have my Visual Studios project open. I did this by going to the folder that my project is in and double clicking on this Visual Studio solution file. This will open up your project in Visual Studios. And from here you can click F5 and it will go ahead and open up your project in Unreal. The reason I do this is because if you open through the Epic Games Launcher instead, whenever you have a null pointer error, Unreal will crash, which it will still do if you open with the Visual Studios project. But in that case, when it does crash, you just get this error screen and then have to try and figure out where your null pointer is. However, whenever you start it from the Visual Studio Solution project, it will then take you to the line that caused the error. So I'll show you how that works later on in this tutorial. But to go ahead and begin while we're in the editor, I'm going to show you how to open up your output log, which I have down here. But if you don't already have it open, you go up to Window, Developer Tools, and then click on Output Log. We'll end up using this to show one of our debugs later on in the video. But now that we've done that, I'm going to go ahead and go back to my code. And I already have a trigger box created that I'll be adding debugs to to show you how you can debug within those. And I'll be using Unreal's third person character controller that you can choose with your starter content. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually create a null error. So I'm going to go to the header of my character controller and I'm going to add a U property. I'm going to make this edit anywhere so that way I can add it inside the details panel. However, I won't be doing that so that way it stays null. I'm just going to make it a U camera component and I'm just going to call it null cam. And again, we're going to leave this empty. We're not going to actually be using this. I'm just going to show you how it will take you to the line of your null reference whenever you start it from this Visual Studio solution instead of starting your Unreal project from the Epic Games launcher. And now we're going to go over to our CPP. Again, this is just Unreal's third person character controller and their starter content. And I'm going to go down to my ray casting function. If you would like a ray casting video, I will provide the link to ours in the description below. But I'm just using this to show you types of debug messages that you can have. The first thing I'm going to do in here is actually create what will be my null reference. So I'm going to take my null camera and I'm going to activate it. And we'll just leave that for now. But again, this is null, so it'll eventually cause an error whenever we go into our scene. And now I'm going to show you how to actually debug a raycast so that way you can visually see the ray on the screen. And the way we do that is with draw debug line. And then the first thing you need to do is get the world. And then you want to say where it starts. I'm going to be using the start of this raycast that I've created up on the top where those two vectors are. And then you want to say where that ends, which will just again be that same endpoint from my raycast. And then you want to pick a color for it to be in the scene. I'm just going to do red. And then you want to say if it's persistent or not. In other words, is this line staying in the scene indefinitely or is it going away? I'm going to have my raycast go away, so I'm going to put false. I don't want it to be persistent. And then the lifetime, in other words, how long is this going to stay on your screen? And I'll do two seconds for that. And then it's depth priority. I'm just going to make zero. And then for its thickness, I'll just make it 10. And again, what this is going to do is just take the same parameters that our raycast has up here, the same start and the same end, and then create a visual line that we can see in the scene. So that way, whenever you're using raycasting, you can make sure that your line is going in the direction that you want it to be going and that it's hitting where you want it to be hitting. And now that I've shown you how to do a draw debug line, I'm going to show you how to actually debug messages to your screen. So the way we do this is through G engine. And then it's add on screen debug message. 
And then the first parameter for this is going to be the key, which just helps this keep track of what message is what, but we don't really care about the key, so we're just going to do a negative one here. And then for the time display, I'm just going to do two seconds. And then for the color, I'll make this one blue. And then finally, the message that we're going to be displaying, I'm going to make it a text, and I'm just gonna have it say on screen. And these are the two debugs that I'm gonna have inside of this script. Again, the first one will draw a line for our raycast to show where it's occurring, and then our next one will just put a message called on screen in this case, in the corner of our player screen. And I'm gonna go back to the header real quick before we go over to our trigger box because I realized I forgot to tell you to make sure that you have this draw debug helpers.h included inside of your classes that are using these debug messages. And now we'll go ahead and go over to our trigger box. I'm gonna go over to the header. I'm pretty sure I already added that. I did, and that's all I need in this. So I'm gonna go over to the CPP. And inside this, I'm actually gonna draw a box around this trigger box so that way we can see in the scene where it is so we can better determine if we're overlapping it whenever we're doing testing. So the function for this is just draw debug box. And then our parameters are pretty similar to our line, except in this case, we're gonna say the center of our box and then how far out our box goes instead of the start and the end of our line. So again, we wanna get the world. And then we wanna say the center, which in this case is just going to be the actor's location. And the actor is our trigger box. And then to get the shape of the box, Unreal actually has a convenient function that we can use. So that way we don't have to actually go out and try and figure out its exact units. We can just do get components, bounding box, and then we're gonna do get extent. And this will just let the function know how big the box is, so that way we don't manually have to provide a size. And then we need our color. I'm gonna make this F color be red. And then do we want the lines to stay in the scene? In this case, I will, so I'll set that to true, so that way you can see how it stays instead of goes away like our line will. And then the lifetime doesn't matter, again, because we're having the persistent lines be true. So we'll just do negative one. And then for our depth priority, we're just gonna give it a zero. And then finally, the thickness will give a five. And this will just add lines around our trigger box in the scene, again, so we can see it easier while doing our testing. And then finally, we're gonna send debug messages to that output log I showed you at the beginning. So we're gonna do this inside our enter function. So that way, whenever our actor overlaps with the box, we'll receive some kind of feedback to let us know that this overlap is being registered. So for this one, instead of just giving text like we did for the on screen debug message, I'm gonna show you how you can have other variables like ints and floats inside of it. So we'll just create some variables first. We'll do int and we'll just call this int variable and we'll make it equal to one. And then we'll do a float and we'll call this float variable and we'll make this equal to 1.1. And then we're going to do an F string because this takes in a text variable. And so we're gonna call this just F string variable and we're gonna make it equal to F string. Now we can go ahead and log this message. So in order to have it output to that output log, we're gonna do UE log, and then we're gonna do a log temp for the category name. And then this is going to just be a warning. And then for our format, this is going to be text, and we can have text in there, but we can also have our int in there, which is going to be a D. And then we can have floats in there, which will be the F. And then we can have F strings in there, which is going to be this S. And then finally, we have to provide it with those variables. So our D is again, that int variable. And then our F is that float variable. And finally, the S is our F string variable, which is going to need to be a pointer. So again, this line will just post this text, comma, int, comma, float, comma, F string to our output log in the editor. And just to clarify, the type that you put here does match up 
to the type that you put here. So if you're wanting to output an int, you need to make sure to do the percent %d. If you're wanting to output a float, you need to make sure to do percent %f. And if you're wanting to output an f string, you need to make sure to do percent %s. And then you want these to be in line over here as well. And that's all of the different debugs that I'm going to show you. However, before we go back to the scene and see how these look, I do want to show you how you can look up other types of things in your solution explorer. So if you open it up on the side here and then go to your search solution explorer, you can type in whatever function you're looking for. So in this case, we're actually going to look for our draw debug helpers. And we're going to go to the class so that way I can show you all the different type of debugs that you can actually do. There's just far too many for me to have all of them in this video. So I'm going to go to the header of that and just open it from this solution explorer. And then as you can see, as I scroll, there's a bunch of different draw debugs that you can do for all different kinds of shapes and all different kinds of instances that you may need. So now we'll go ahead and go back to our scene. And I'll go ahead and show you how these different debugs look. But if you remember, our game will actually crash first whenever I send a raycast. So we'll go ahead and do that except I have to compile. So let me just compile real quick. Okay, now we've compiled. And now when I click play, if I click my mouse, as you can see, this null camera is in fact null. And so it throws the exception, which does in fact crash Unreal, but it shows me the exact line that threw this error instead of giving you a long error message that would happen if you opened it from the Epic Games launcher instead of from this Visual Studios solution. So I'll go ahead and stop running it and I will just delete this line and save. And then we'll click F5 again to run it once more. And you don't have to compile the code that you just changed as whenever you open it that way, it builds that code that you're opening. So it's compiled from that. So we can go ahead and click play. And then as you can see, if I click my mouse, it shoots out that raycast and then it eventually fades. And you can see the little blue on screen message over in the corner. Now I'm going to go ahead and go back to the scene and we'll go to our content browser and drag out a trigger box. And now if I go back into it, you can see that there's the red outline of it. And if I enter the box and click F8 so I can go over to my output log, you can see that it logs that debug message that we typed up with the different types of variables. So again, if I click F8 once more to possess the player again, and then just run around, you can see each time I enter, it pops that up. And whenever I click my mouse, I have a bunch of debug lines pop up in my scene, as well as the on-screen pop up in the corner whenever the raycast does hit an object. So as a recap, I just went over some different debug message types, as well as showing you how you can open Unreal from your Visual Studio solution instead of from the Epic Games launcher. As always, I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comments, or you can join our Discord and ask them there. We make videos here every Wednesday and Saturday, but we also stream on Twitch Tuesday and Wednesday. We have an app called Blast Off on the Google Play Store and an asset pack of kids toys on the Unity Store. We also have a Patreon, and if any of those things interest you, all the links will be in the description below. I will also provide links in the description for our Raycast tutorial, if you're wanting to follow that, as well as our events tutorial, which goes over trigger boxes. Don't forget to like and subscribe, Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.